Welcome, welcome everyone, especially for the early loggers. <laughs> As a tradition, we will love to warm up a little bit uh, our floor by, by learning from you, uh, from uh, where you guys are watching us and uh, what role you have in your company. So I am dropping the canonical message here in the chat. So let us know a little bit about you. Uh, can you type your name, role, and uh, from where you're watching us, guys? Meanwhile, welcome Arthur, Hans, Irene, and Selman. Hi, Hans. Where are you watching from uh, uh, us? Oh, nice. <laughs> awesome. See, Leslie is following us too. Welcome, welcome. So yeah, we're curious, we're curious. We want to know if you guys are early in the morning or not, like at least to, to understand uh, how much we can shout during the webinar. <laughs> See, Rianne just joined. Hello. So we still have a few more minutes before we actually start it. Welcome, James. Where are you watching us from, James? Awesome. I'll get well soon then. <laughs> A few more minutes to go. Hello, Katya. Shrini is also with us. Hi, Shrini. You put some music next time.
All right, I guess that we can start. Let me start by sharing my screen so you guys can all see our beautiful slides. So welcome, welcome everyone. And uh, welcome to our brand new 2023 Plauti product update. It is fantastic to have you all here today as well. I hope you are excited as uh, I am for uh, our latest update into the uh, duplicate check, record validation and data action platform uh, uh, roadmap for integrations. I guess uh, we can start with a brief introduction uh, and of course uh, we can dive into today's agenda. All right, so my name is Nicola. I'm the one on the right here, uh, account executive with Plauti and the co-host for today's panel together with me is Master Root software architect at Plauti and the lead wizard on Plauti data quality solution development. <laughs> and uh, we are Plauti, generating data happiness since 2012. Plauti is the company behind the uh, Plauti data management suite, duplicate check, record validation, and data action platform. Uh, duplicate check is our data quality solution to find, merge, and prevent duplicates at any point of entry. Record validation is our solution to validate and format email addresses and phone numbers. That action platform is our mass action tool enabler built to empower uh, users into Salesforce. And uh, last but not the least is Plauti Data Management, our complete data management solution, which enables your Salesforce to be your single and complete source of truth which enables uh, the deduplication, validation, and consolidation, and helps you to standardize custom records in your CRM. Um, all Plauti solutions are 100% native force.com. Uh, we provide Salesforce a safety peace of mind by sharing the same strong security logic and processes, uh, provide you with a more efficient implementation and the full integrations with your Salesforce uh, business logic and custom processes. Now, here you can see our quick carousel of a few global customers in data quality, covering diverse industries. Data is the new gold. And uh, of course, like uh, uh, having the right tool to transform is uh, to transform uh, data into informations is a new way of envisioning customer expectation and the need to build a true customer 360. Um, and so, so basically all these companies here share uh, the need to add great value to their own Salesforce power and then user alike. Uh, with less tech headaches uh, implementation and uh, with a few easy steps. So as uh, you can see here on today's agenda, we will showcase the latest product update for data action platform and the uh, record validation and duplicate check. And again, we want to keep this interactive. So we're going to shoot some polls during the webinar and we're going to conclude, of course, with a Q&A session as uh, our tradition, of course, but you're free to drop your questions at any time into the Q&A section uh, down below here. We are aiming to wrap in everything within uh, 45 minutes. Uh, recording will be provided, of course. We will be sharing also on our YouTube channels. But uh, we do encourage you to stick around until the end and drop questions uh, during our presentation. But uh, before we move to our uh, demo, just a quick recap so uh, we can check where were we. So this is probably what you remember from our last uh, webinar. This is uh, the collaboration roadmap that we envisioned uh, across the 2022 and 2023. Um, the goal is to better, of course, uh, integrate the functionality to our pain point solutions and better data management and data quality to our partners in their high data quality journey. So during our last webinar, we covered the first main integrations of uh, that action platform. And uh, now uh, that is able to run uh, on results even from a uh, duplicate job or even for validation job. Uh, enable, of course, power and end user alike to perform uh, mass actions like mass convert, mass update, mass delete, not only, but uh, also uh, your own custom macros and more directly after viewing the job results or by calling the job results from the tap job launcher. And uh, today, as you can see where the car just parked is uh, where we're going to look today to the new functionalities of our solution, which are, of course, the run flow action. Uh, an action that can be called at any moment, for example, after matching duplicates job to execute your own custom Salesforce flow. Uh, we are introducing the dynamic due date on mass create task action, where uh, you can actually set a due date that is relative to the date of creation of the task, for example, is a week later or a specific number of days later. Um, then we have, of course, runs, uh, run once now on already scheduled job uh, that jobs. Uh, pretty handy if you want to, of course, uh, perform a one-off um, uh, bulk action 
and uh, of course we have a new uh, matching methods for the date distance now available weeks and months and uh, of course uh, especially related to the new uh, matching methods here there is a little uh, demo uh, on how you can easily set the new matching methods so these matching methods uh, are, will score 100 percent if the dates in the two fields are within the number of weeks or months uh, that are set in the slider as you can see now in the quick video That's, i think it's pretty neat but now, uh, I guess enough with the slides and it's time for the action and I will leave the floor to Root. They will show the potential of running a flow without any tech headache. So I guess take it away, Root. Yes, thank you very much, Nicola. And uh, thanks for having me today. I'm uh, really happy to share what my uh, amazing colleagues in the development department have built since the last release. and. Um, I think that the thing that we're going to show you right now is really exciting because um, we're basically opening up the data action platform and we're going to allow you to build your own custom da bulk data actions using Salesforce flows, which is uh, really interesting. So I would like to start with an example use case. Um, as you can see, I have opened up the cases in my Salesforce org and unfortunately there are a lot of automatic replies. Um, I see some Spanish auto replies. I see some uh, English auto replies, some, some in Dutch. Um, but the thing they all have in common is that they're not actual cases. So I would like to get rid of these. And that's why I have created a flow. Let me move over to my flow. I created a simple flow that uh, gets a case record. And this becomes relevant later when I configure this in the data action platform. Um, and I made a decision element where I decide if something is an auto reply. And I'm doing that by checking if the subject of the case email contains a certain value. In this case, I have various translations of the word auto reply. If that is the case, I uh, have configured my flow to delete the record because I do not need that case at this moment. So I've saved this flow. And if I'm now going into the configuration part of the data action platform, which is the dub setup, I can go into the action library and what we can see is that I created a macro and a macro enables you to basically set and forget certain configuration for a um, action. So let me quickly open that up. Um, so this macro that is already pre-configured, it uh, runs the flow that I've just shown you. So it, it basically executes the logic of the Salesforce flow that I just showed you for certain records. And it uh, can use all the power of that, like a dub job like all the filters are like starting it from a list view. Um, so let me just um, go over to that job and actually execute this flow using that. <coughs> I'm creating a new job, which is a bulk action that runs on um, a set of records. In this case, I'm going to run it on all my cases. And the neat thing about this is you can also schedule your jobs. And if you combine that with the flow that I just created, you can create, for instance, a scheduled action that removes auto replies every week. So this is the macro that I created, which invokes the flow. And there we go. And as we can see, it's already um, going steady. Yes, there we go, it's completed. So let's go back to the cases. And as we can see, the auto, auto replies seem to have uh, been removed, which is nice. The so this is this is really interesting because you can um, uh, there, there's a wide variety of ways to uh, build custom flows and allow your end users via these macros to actually um, use them in their day to day work or to schedule a job that does the work automatically for you. Um, so this is really uh, this is to us this is really interesting and we cannot wait to see what you guys will build uh, using this feature. And if you're already using duplicate check. Um, you can combine the data action platform with duplicate check 
to um, make it even more powerful. And I would like to show something uh, about that as well. So I'm moving over maybe, to the duplicate check. Maybe Ruth, I guess we can uh, launch maybe a poll first because actually yeah, we are showing up. close. <laughs> Uh, but uh, we would like to know better, actually, uh, how many of you actually use flows. So you should see now um, our poll, Flomio River. And the question is, how many times is your Salesforce instance uh, relying on flows? And, uh, and we want to know if you is a sporadic thing. So one to 10 times a month, between 10 to 25 times a month more than 25 months, or if it's too many times that so you actually would like to have the end user to take care of it. So we see some questions already in. So we see like people actually really do use Flow a lot. That's really good to hear. Yeah. I guess that at the moment, the majority of our attendees are actually using more than 25 times a month flows, immediately followed by too many times. <laughs> so I guess you can see uh, the value of uh, having um, a solution, uh, like run a flow into a bulk action um, to actually enable uh, end users to even run a flow without any tech edit, without like setting up the whole flow. Actually, in the meantime, we have a question from Ants uh, Root. Uh, if uh, this runs in import API, how do you make sure you don't hit limits? All right. Um, so in this in this case, the um, the job that I just run uh, it it runs uh, at a either on demand or at a scheduled moment, and um, we have built in some safeguards in these jobs uh, in the form of chunk sizes that you can configure. Uh, regarding to the configuration of your flows. It's a bit of a technical part, but we have that uh, covered in our documentation. And um, if set correctly, that uh, will uh, assure that you will never hit the governor limits and you will be able to run that flow on a um, very large amount of records without any problem. All right. Thank you, Hans, for your question. <laughs> All right, we can wrap up our poll. And uh, yep, the winner is like uh, more than 25 times a month. So I hope you guys are gonna start to test it out as it's already into your uh, DAP environment. All right, let's uh, get moving to the next section. Yeah, so as we've seen, it is, um, it is very cool to be able to build custom DAP actions using Salesforce flows and um, using these custom DAP actions to actually uh, make duplicate check even more powerful is something that I would like to show you now. So I'm going to DC job, which is the uh, both duplicate search functionality from duplicate check. And as you can see, I've already run a job. So let's look at the results. All right, we found a duplicate here. Um, I, I searched for duplicate contacts in this case, as you can see, and we found a duplicate contact, a duplicate instance of Michael Scott. But there's a problem here. The problem is they are uh, both related to a different account. So that means the account is duplicate as well. And that imposes kind of a uh, issue which we are going to solve right now. Um, so let's say you have um, two accounts that are duplicate with some contacts uh, below that. And you're doing a contact search, which we did in this case. So we found duplicate contacts and we want to merge them. If we do that, um, the account that is um, left over is um, is alone. It, it does not have any contacts anymore. So it's basically floating around in your org without uh, the need to be there. In an ideal situation, however, what you would do is you would like to merge the accounts first and then do the contact merge, create after, to end up with an ideal situation where you have a single account with a single contact all deduplicated and still related to each other. So that is why I have created a another Salesforce flow where we're using the duplicate check flow actions as well. So this is a flow that can be run on the group of records from duplicate check. That means that I'm going to uh, start it on these two contacts. 
what I'm doing in my flow is I'm getting the contact that I uh, want to analyze. And I'm instead of uh, just looking at the contact itself, I'm going to actually fetch the account of that contact. So the parent, the, the, the account that is related to. And after doing that, uh, after doing that, I pass them on to duplicate check using our duplicate check flow actions, which are already available as well. And if there are any duplicates found, I merge the duplicate accounts. So that means we end up with a single account. And then after that, we can merge our contacts without any problems. So let's try. I'm going to the duplicate check job and I have opened up my group of duplicates. And as you can see, this new uh, button appeared here, which is the action launcher. It invokes the DAP action launcher straight from your DC job. Now I'm going to run the Salesforce flow that I've just shown you, where we deduplicate the accounts related to the context that I've just selected. All right. And now if we open up the group again, as you can see, they're both related to the same account because then the Mifflin one and two have been merged into one. Now I can merge these contacts without, without any issues using the default uh, duplicate check functionality. And after doing that, I'll end up with one uh, contact named Michael Scott related to one account uh, that is done remission in this case. So this um, custom flow action that I made actually improved my duplicate checking process in this case, because if I have a workflow that um, searches for duplicates from a contact perspective, I can now make sure that using this dot action that I've created, I will not end up with orphaned accounts in my database. I think as we have another see, poll, right? Yeah, we do, we do. And as you okay. can see, like uh, the potentiality of uh, running a custom flow can actually open to different scenarios, which we are curious about. For example, as in this case, like does your organization usually merge all duplicates uh, and um, or there are processes for uh, letter management, for example, for reporting, for manual updates later on or for that integration consistency. So. Uh, yes, um, we, you guys merge, of course, and uh, you keep everything clean and tidy, or uh, no, you just probably update uh, field on the record and push in on a queue. And um, we would like to know from you if you can drop in the comment section or in the chat, um, what is the reason behind it? Why, why uh, you don't actually uh, merge directly the records? There's a tie here. So actually, this is pretty interesting. Like, so people do actually keep some of their duplicates also for uh, latter management. For those who say no, of course, I'm very happy to read from uh, your use case. Okay, okay. So yeah, answer is a good point. So uh, as a consultant, the policy differs per customer. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so, oh, okay. So there are documents linked and uh, in an external system. And uh, if we delete the record, the link will be destroyed and it would be difficult for us to find the document. As documentation uh, attached to a specific record route, like uh, once there's a merge, those uh, documentation will still be into the unique record at the end, right? A 
think the point that uh, uh, Tony is raising is actually really interesting in this case. Because if, it, if there is a valid use case that you do not want to merge duplicates, um, what you can do now is uh, you can use duplicate check to actually find the duplicates, disable the merge functionality, so not do that, and then use DOP to run a custom action on these duplicates to actually mark them uh, as duplicate in a flow action without deleting them. So I think this, this is a great use case actually for the feature that we have just shown, which is uh, really nice. Also, Rianne says, like, we do merge, but we uh, are experiencing the problem with empty account records because of NPSP settings. So this solution can be very useful. That's pretty great to know, Rianne. Thanks for really sharing. To hear. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We can end the poll. And uh, as a result, uh, yeah, 73% uh, of our viewers today, yes, they do merge. Um, and 27% uh, of them uh, still prefer to tackle uh, the, the records afterwards. Uh, and this is because, as, uh, as Hans says, because of permissions or uh, because of uh, specific links connected to the uh, record itself. Pretty neat. Okay, let's get to the next section. All right. Yeah, so there's uh, one more change that we made to the data action platform, um, which is to the uh, assign task action. And I would like to show that to you right now. Uh, let me switch back to the data action platform. All right. So as you can see, I have a couple opportunities here and I would like to assign some tasks to my sales colleagues to actually follow up these opportunities. And I'm going to leverage the dot job for that again to start a job on um, some of my opportunities. All right, there we go. And uh, keep in mind that these jobs can always be scheduled in the future as well, or in a, at a repeating uh, sequence. And that is important for the change that we have made. So I currently I'm going to run it uh, immediately, but in this case, it is very relevant to know that you can schedule them and have them repeat in the future. Because when I decide to actually create some tasks, I only want to uh, run this job on the opportunities that are uh, in a negotiation stage because they will probably close soon. So when I'm going to create the tasks, what I'm now able to do is uh, set a due date, a day after a task creation, or a week, or a month, or a custom number of days. So previously, it was only uh, possible to set a custom date there. Um, but that in, uh, involves the problem that if you schedule this job and run it in the future, your um, due date may actually be in the past because of the fact that you configured it um, a while ago while the job is still running every week. So we have fixed it now, and we can now set the due date to a week after task creation, which I'm going to do right now. So um, let me see. I would like to make this a task to call, and I would say check up on this opportunity. Right, so that the due date is dynamic. So if I were to schedule this job um, and it runs next week, the due date for that task will be the week after. Right, and as completed. and as Rude was mentioning, like you can run this uh, in a scheduled fashion, and uh, with the new feature introduced with DAP, you can even run it once at once. So say that you have it scheduled, and maybe it's uh, with a, a longer interval than uh, daily or uh, weekly. And you want to run it, uh, for example, for uh, urgent opportunities. You can also trigger it at once uh, on the schedule uh, section of the DAP job. Yep. So as you can see, the tasks have been created and um, the due date has been set to next week, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, so that worked uh, as intended, which is nice. And uh, that was the, uh, the part that I wanted to show you. So thanks for the, uh, for the uh, interest. And we're really looking forward to see what custom actions you guys will build using Salesforce Flows. Thanks. Awesome. All right. As we are launching our last poll now, we would like to know from you 
what of this statement actually uh, resonates the most with you. So uh, since we were talking about tasks, we want to know like uh, if you have everything under control where there are tasks, however, there might be something that still slips through the cracks. Um, if it's important to you to optimize the task creation from the beginning and keep it always relevant, or uh, maybe if the task manager is a <laughs> hard ballpark to range and uh, sometimes it doesn't have enough uh, customization for you to go through it, or uh, if you don't even actually use tasks in Salesforce. So we would like to learn from you. All right, in the meantime, I can also launch our Q&A session. So you're actually free to uh, drop your questions in the Q&A uh, uh, part and the Q&A button. Oh my God. Here, okay. In the meantime, we have already a question coming from Hans. Uh, he was asking, so maybe I should stop sharing actually, um, if you could actually uh, open the decision to see what variable that was used to decide either uh, to go left and right. I think he's mentioning the, uh, the job um, that you uh, showcased before uh, root. We can share again the screen. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I can definitely do that. So both of the uh, flows have a decision, but I think I did show the one for the other reply. So I'm assuming that it is about the duplicate check job that I have created Correct. to find the accounts. All right. Um, so the duplicate check flow action, as you can see, it takes a record ID and based on all your scenarios that you have configured in the duplicate check setup, it will return um, the uh, duplicates that have been found. So in the decision, what I uh, have done is I took the output from the uh, duplicate check uh, action and I checked if the total duplicates, which is a property on the output of our duplicate check flow action is greater than zero, because that is just um, a value that holds the amount of duplicates, duplicates that have been found. And then for the next step, if that was the case, I pass the entire output of the duplicate search action that I've showed before into the merge um, into the merge action that we have as well. And I set a threshold, in this case one, and the threshold is the uh, minimum duplicate score that the duplicates need to have in order to be merged by this action. Does that answer your question? Okay, yes, and said like a gotcha, the output uh, of the element was was uh, he was looking for. Nice. Awesome. Any other question in the meantime? Maybe we can uh, also conclude the poll. So we see that 40% uh, of our viewers today actually uh, would like to have more uh, control on their tasks as uh, sometimes updating it is a little bit troublesome. Uh, immediately follow actually with a tie on uh, people that don't use tasks in Salesforce <laughs> and uh, people that actually would like to uh, keep everything tidy and uh, well-organized uh, at the beginning. <laughs> so thanks for the inputs. Okay, thanks, Anne. <laughs> Anne.